Hi, welcome back to our discussion of acid-base chemistry. We're going to be forging ahead into the land of conjugates or partners for acids and bases. Now, sometimes this terminology is used strictly and other times you have to be careful. Sometimes there are questions that just reference acids and bases and don't use the words conjugates. But typically, you would not call a reactant a conjugate. The reactants are called an acid or a base. The product, an acid has a conjugate or partner base, and a base has a conjugate or partner acid. And that can be pretty straightforward. These differ by only an H and a plus. Where it gets a little dicey is in reversible reactions you have acids and bases going both directions. So sometimes the conjugate terminology is not employed. So if, they're, if it's reversible and they're asking for all the bases, they want to know bases going and they want to go bases coming back. All right, so we'll try to note that as we go throughout the, the unit. All right, so the modified form of an acid or the conjugate of an acid is the one without an H and a plus. The modified form, I, I don't love this terminology, but you're going to see it. The modified form of the base is with an H and a plus. So what do bases do best? Bases accept an H and a plus. So we modify the base structure by giving it the H and the plus. Or another word we would say is once we've added it, it becomes protonated. Acids, the modified form of an acid is after it's given up, if it's H and it's plus, and it's called deprotonated, or the unprotonated form, okay? So some terminology that we really have to work on. So you've got to be able to recognize a conjugate. The most difficult thing is you're going to be given acids and salts of the conjugate, or a base and salts of the conjugate. And that doesn't mean they're both reactants. Just because they're both in the solution doesn't mean they're both reactants. So you're going to have to kind of learn to recognize those very carefully. So something differs only in an H and a plus, you have a conjugate. So acid, the conjugate base, you lose one H at a time. So it'd be H2PO3, and I lost a plus charge, so I have a negative. A salt you might see, sodium and potassium salts are probably the most common. I mean, I can't go back to the back room and get an anion by itself. It has to come as a salt, and so it would come as a sodium salt with the sodium ion being a spectator ion. We will often ignore it. Oxalic acid, lose an H, one at a time. That's one of the nicest things about this unit is most of the stoichiometry is one to one. And you've got to lose an H and a positive, which leaves you that leftover negative. So we might have potassium, HC2O4, okay? Bases, what do bases do best? Bases gain an H and a plus. You want to put the H either at the beginning or on the nitrogen end. Organic bases center on nitrogen. So in the ammonia, this ends in IA, we would add an H and a plus to get ammonium. Those are commonly switched there. Now I need a salt, but I need a, uh, an anion that doesn't have any acid-base properties. So chloride or nitrate are very common here. So if I wanted to get some ammonium ion into the solution, I may add it as ammonium nitrate. Um, if this is a base, what do bases do best? Bases gain an H and a plus. You can think of gaining bases in a baseball game. So instead of NH2, we're going to put it out near the nitrogen. We have NH3. We gained a hydrogen and a positive charge. So a possible salt of the conjugate you may see in the question 
would be this same formula, but we need a counter ion. Chloride doesn't have any acid base properties, so it would be a good choice there. All right, now, what if it's in, let's look at the list here. I, I hear it said that strong acids have weak conjugate bases, weak acids have strong conjugate bases, and that's not true. What I want you to use is not strong versus weak, but stronger versus weaker. Now, here's my formula for my acid to go to the conjugate base. So this would be its conjugate base. Um, you just lose an H and a plus. All right, so that's the difference between those formulas. If it's weak, it's going to be an equilibrium. So these are your equilibrium constants, your Ka. If you know a Ka, you can always find the Kb for its conjugate base. So this is the Kb for the conjugate bases because Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. So the, the Kw you memorize is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. Uh, if it's not at that temperature, then the question will tell you. Now, my point is this. This is a weak acid. It doesn't have anywhere near a strong conjugate base. But, as you notice, <coughs> excuse me, I want you to notice that as you increase the strength of the acid, you decrease the strength of the conjugate base. So that's the take home here. If you increase your acid strength, you decrease your conjugate base strength. We could also say if we increase our base strength, we decrease our conjugate acid strength. But don't think weak versus strong. It's weaker and stronger. It's a comparative term. And you'll see lots of different types of questions on that. So let's take a look at this one where we predict strengths. So here, in going from reactant to product, it lost an H and a plus. So that's an acid. Now, this is an equilibrium. In the reverse direction, this is an acid. In the forward direction, this is a base. In the reverse direction, this is a base. Now, are they conjugates? You bet. Okay, but it's we're just going to identify them as acids and bases. So the question said, which acid is stronger? So I have to compare the two acids, HOCl or HIO3, and I have to compare the bases. Now, the key to this question is this. This KEQ tells me when this acid reacts with this base, the end result is reactant favored. So it pushes that direction. So that means, so it's kind of like a push of war, that means my HIO3 is my stronger acid so if it's the stronger acid, it has the weaker conjugate. And so OCl minus is my stronger conjugate. So since HIO3 is a stronger acid, that means that the opposite is true for their conjugates. Okay, so that's kind of the take home there and as you analyze. But the key is trying to determine which direction was the favored direction. And in this case, because the equilibrium was much less than one, that means it's a reactant favored reaction. Okay, I know that there is lots more for us to do. So until our next video, or I see you in class, this is your best chemistry teacher signing off.